Oh, hi there. Welcome to BMAD Photo. Thanks for joining me. And welcome back if you've been here before. If you're a first time visitor, thanks for stopping by. I'm doing some in camera focus stacking in my garden near these beautiful hostas that are growing along the fence line here. In camera focus stacking is a really nice feature on the Olympus cameras, but it can be finicky and hard to get used to. So I want to explain how I set up and do my in camera focus stacking some of the benefits of it and also some of the pitfalls. So first of all, I need to mention that focus stacking is a convenience feature in the Olympus and OM system cameras and a few other camera brands also have the in-camera focus stacking. You will need one of the pro lenses from Olympus or the non-pro macro lenses such as the 60 millimeter macro or the 30 millimeter macro. I have the 90 millimeter macro which is one of their macro lenses and also a pro lens. Any of those lenses will work with focus stacking along with any of the other pro line of Olympus lenses. Other Micro Four Thirds lenses will not do in-camera focus stacking. If you do not have one of those lenses to match your camera body, you can still do bracketing and stack them after the fact with software. So let's get into it. First, I want to talk about my camera settings and how I set it up for focus stacking. In the Olympus menu, I go to the bracketing menu, and in there, I go to on, and then I go to focus bracket, and make sure that's turned on. Focus bracketing then has some sub options, one of which is focus stacking, which is the option that actually takes the images and creates a JPEG in your camera, automatically stacking them when it works. If you have an EM5 or an OM5, stacking will only take eight images. If you have an EM1 or OM1, it will take up to 15 images. That is a limitation of using stacking versus bracketing. With bracketing, you can do anywhere from two up to 999 images. So that is one thing to keep in mind. And when you're doing very close up macro, the closer you are to your subject, the more images you will need to get more depth of field from front to back. But with a high enough f-stop and setting the focus differential properly, we can still get some nice in-camera stacked images, just knowing that it's not gonna potentially be what we could get if we did focus bracketing and wanted hundreds of images to go from front to back. I'm very close to these hostas right now that you can see. I'm gonna be in the macro to extreme macro range. So I'm gonna set the focus differential to eight. But there's another option for charge time. Depending on what flash you're using, you might have to adjust the charge time to set a delay between each image if your camera cannot properly sync with your flash. If you have one of the Olympus or OM system branded flashes, you can leave the charge time set to zero and the camera will automatically pause when it needs to between shots to give the flash time to recharge. If you have the Godox flash, that will give you the same benefit as the OM system or Olympus flashes and that you can set the charge time to zero and the camera and flash will sync and you will not miss shots where the flash didn't fire. If you have another flash brand, you might need to play with the charge time to make sure that you are not missing flash strobes on some of the stacking or bracketing exposures. There are a few other trade-offs I should mention with focus stacking in camera. There is going to be about a 30% crop on any image you take. So when you are trying to actually get the image when you have focus stacking on, on the screen, there will be a red box or whatever color, whatever color you have set up um, for your overlays. And that will show you what the actual image will be. So when framing your shot, make sure that you are getting it in the center region, what you want to be the subject of your shot, because it will be clipped in the final JPEG image that the camera produces. When instead you do focus bracketing, I have found that with software such as Photoshop, 
Helicon Focus or Zarene Stacker, the crop penalty is much, much less. As a matter of fact, usually you can get almost your initial image fully framed in the final stack if you want to. One other thing to mention is when you're very close and trying to do handheld stacks, the closer you are, the slightest movement will have a better chance of actually failing your stack. Let me try one right now. And these hostas are slightly moving in the breeze. As I move in, as you know with extreme macro, the slightest movements get more exaggerated and that will fail the stack. Let's try one. Focus stacking error, image composite failed. Get used to seeing that message. You're gonna see it a lot if you try to do focus stacking. But there's one thing to keep in mind, all is not lost. With focus stacking, even though it's combining all the images, it will save all of your images also. So when it takes eight or 15 shots, you will have all eight or 15 images and you can still try to stack them yourself after the fact. I have found many, many times that the camera will fail to do the stack, but they stack perfectly in Helicon Focus or Photoshop. When you're trying to do the in-camera stacking in macro or extreme macro range, you're gonna probably wanna do a higher f-stop than you would do if you were doing bracketing. With bracketing, if I'm doing hundreds of images I'm comfortable going down to f5.6 or f8, setting the focus differential to one, and just allowing it to sweep through all the images, and I know eventually I'll have something. With focus stacking, I really recommend, depending on the lens you're using, of course, but with the pro glass, I would still use at least f8. At f8, you might have a good image even if the stack was lost, and then you don't have to go through the process of stacking. If you tried to do stacking at f5.6, I found that no matter what you set the differential to, it's barely gonna move forward and back, and so you're not getting much more depth of field than you would with just a higher f-stop of like f13. So this time I just took another image and I thought the stack would fail, but that time it worked and it seemed to have just as much movement as the last one. So sometimes it's quite random, or it might depend if things are moving, you know, laterally or horizontally or vertically. Another thing I found with stacking when you're in the macro or extreme macro range is the higher f-stop also gives you a better chance of the stacking actually working in camera. One other tip to keep in mind, whether you're doing bracketing or stacking, you wanna make sure you have a fast enough shutter speed whether you have bright light or you need to use a flash, getting each image crisp and sharp will help you get better overall stacks. There's one final thing I wanna mention about stacking, and this is probably the most important thing to remember if you're gonna do in-camera focus stacking with an Olympus or OM system camera. And I think this does apply to other camera brands also. The in-camera stacking fundamentally works different than bracketing in one key way. And that is how it takes the images and shifts the plane of focus. Let's say that this flash is what we're taking a picture of and our camera is back here. If I am doing focus bracketing, what I'll wanna do is set the focus point to this plane right here, start the bracket in the images will sweep back all the way to the back and then when it gets back there I can stop the bracket. Focus stacking works fundamentally different and this is very confusing at first if you're not aware of this. With focus stacking turned on the initial image is, is going to start. The second image will go back. The third image and the fourth image will move forward and then it's going to snap pass to the starting point and go to the end. So you can still potentially cover the range you want, but when you're setting up focus for your first shot, you have to set it somewhat in the center. The benefit of this is if you're taking an image of, let's say an insect, you can focus on the eyes or the key part that you want to focus on, start your stack, and if the stack fails 
or if nothing else, you're guaranteed to have what you want the primary focus to be in focus. But this can also be challenging. If you're bracketing, it is generally easier or you have more control to know exactly where it's going to start and you can control where it stops. So again, keep this in mind, especially if you're switching between bracketing and stacking, it can just get very frustrating and you'll feel like you're missing focus or why isn't your focus stack working. It can be very confusing, especially when you're up close to actually see what the focus is doing. So just remember, focus stacking, the stacking function is going to take the image, it's gonna move back, it's gonna sweep forward. Focus bracketing, you start at the closest point and it will move forward. Hey, I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please click the thumbs up. Thank you for joining me, consider subscribing. My name is Brian, this is Be Mad Photo. Get out there, keep shooting, and enjoy yourselves.